Imagine if the tyranny got so bad in America that you were arrested for doing something good for your neighbor. And beyond that, you were arrested and jailed for stopping a mass shooting that was in progress. That is what just happened in Hawaii. Take a look at this. This is beyond belief. First at six, loved ones have identified Courtney Raymond Arakaki as one of the four people killed in Waianae on Saturday, including rampage suspect Hiram Silva. Police say Silva was shot to death by his neighbor, Richard Keamo Carnate, who was arrested and released the next day. Carnate is the hero in this story. Carnate got arrested by police. Carnate was imprisoned by the cops who should have been there to protect, but can't be there because they can't be everywhere at once. So the hero of the story goes to jail. Amo Carnate's attorney tells us he was protecting his home and family against more violence. Daryl Huff has more on that and new details revealed today by HPD's chief. The chief said many aspects of this horrible crime are still being investigated, but he did answer key questions about whether the weapons involved were legally owned and why the man who shot the suspect was arrested. The Campbell family was hosting their annual Labor Day weekend gathering of family and close friends, and there were only about 15 people left when Hiram Silva's front loader roared into their yard and smashed cars and drums of fuel into the covered lanai. So let's, let's keep this into perspective. This guy comes onto somebody else's property with heavy equipment, a front loader loaded with 55 gallon drums that they later found out were fuel. He's intending to do a lot of damage. He runs into the house. He jumps out of the heavy equipment and starts shooting at people, kills three people. People rush to the backyard in fear for their lives, wondering if they're going to be next. He's got a fish in a barrel zone scenario. The shooter does. And then a neighbor comes from across the way and he ends the carnage. And he's the guy that goes to jail. I mean, this guy was intent on killing and hurting as many people as he could. Yep. This was as evil as I've seen. And, you know, my client's got his children there. He's got family members there, his mother-in-laws. I mean, they were they were terrified. And when I, I saw him this morning, and probably today and, and, and for a while after that, he's not going to get over this for a long time. Here, here's, the, here's the front loader right here. This is a huge piece of equipment. This guy planned on taking as many lives with him as he possibly could. This guy was literally insane. This is awful. Attorney Michael Green's client is 42-year-old Richard Chiamo Carnate, who used his legally registered handgun to kill Silva after Silva shot five people, three women fatally. He was certainly concerned for Silva. I think his mother was taking a shower or a bath. She ran and she was completely undressed in the backyard. People were hiding in the backyard, cowering, waiting to see what he was going to do to them. Despite that, Green does not dispute the police decision to detain Chiamo Carnate overnight. We are a non-standard ground state. Even if you had a license to carry, if you're an individual that discharges a firearm that is involved in injuring another person, you will more than likely, if not almost guarantee, you're going to be arrested. There will be an investigation as to the facts and circumstances, and we will present that case to the prosecutor's office. Let me, let me just say, I totally understand being detained for questioning. Hey, we got to sort things out. You could be the gunman. I totally get that. But then when you find out from witnesses, when you find out from this guy, when you do all your investigation, you find out, oh, this is the good guy. We shouldn't place cuffs on him. We shouldn't kidnap him. We shouldn't fingerprint him or take him to jail. When you find that out, there's no way this guy should have spent a minute, let alone a day in jail, treating the hero as a criminal. Get his office. The chief confirmed that Silva was carrying a rifle and a handgun when he attacked the Kiamo home. Neither was registered. He urged people who have potentially violent disputes with neighbors to reach out to police. Here we go. Listen to this. In the context of what we're talking about, this guy who drives this front loader into a house, shoots five people, kills three, is on a rampage. In that context, the police chief says this. Call 911, let the police handle the situation. We're e equipped with the right resources uh, and information to come to the families, talk about it, uh, and, and then help. And I'm more concerned with what- I, I just gotta hear it again. I just gotta hear it again. In the context of an active shooter, mass casualty event, this police chief wants you to 
Call 911. Let the police handle this. Oh, there, there's a gunman coming down aisle five in the grocery store. I better call 911. There's a guy who just rammed the front of my house and it's caving in. It looks like there's fuel spilling all over the place. Oh, five people just got shot. We're all running in the backyard wondering if we're going to live. I better call 911. Maybe it'd be a good idea to call 1911. Maybe Glock 22. Maybe it'd be a good idea to call three, Mr. 357. He's saying, hey, we're equipped to handle this. Now, when seconds count, police are minutes away, but we're equipped. So when we show up, no, no. Hey, this man shot a gunman. This man put an end to the carnage. No, he's sitting there going, hey, just call 911. Don't worry. We're the professionals. We're, we'll take care of it. And if we find out that you were the hero on the scene, well, we're taking you in. Situation. We're e equipped with the right resources uh, and information to come to the families, talk about it, uh, and, and then help. And I'm more concerned with retaliation right now. I'm hoping the police department down there will have at least enough policemen that, that go around the block or I don't know if they can station somebody there so something bad doesn't happen again. The chief did not make an estimate about when his investigation will be complete. He says detectives still have tons of evidence to go through that was collected at the chaotic scene. Now, let me just go ahead and give both sides of this story because not all cops are as checked out as this police chief right here. What's his name? Joe Logan. Honolulu Police Chief, Honolulu Police Chief Joe Logan. Not all cops are checked out like that. As a matter of fact, what, what Police Chief Joe Logan should have done is, hey, we've got a hero. This is what we want to see more of. Not this is not a stand your ground state. We don't want you defending yourself. That's our job to defend you. That's utter BS. And we have an example of that right here. Remember this armed hero stop mass shooter, Indiana mall. This is at the Greenwood mall and the hero on the scene is 22 year old Elisha Dick. And I want to show you what the police chief said, the Greenwood Indiana police chief, the police chief said that Mr. Dickon had shown proficient and sound tactics in firing at the gunman with a handgun from quite a distance. From what I understand, it was like 40 yards. He pinpointed the, the shooter. He was able to take aim, take position, and end the life of the shooter before the shooter ended the lives of other people. Despite having no law enforcement or military training, that probably worked in his benefit, by the way. Mr. Dickon also gestured for other shoppers to flee behind him as he engaged and closed in on the suspect, said the chief. He fired 10 rounds. Mr. Dickon, who was lawfully carrying a concealed pistol. Now, what if he was unlawfully carrying one? And he was still the hero on the scene. What if he had a gun that wasn't registered? Would he go to jail? That's how ridiculous gun laws are. You can actually, because of some law written on the books, you could have a guy save the life of a family member of a police chief or judge. And that guy's still going to go to jail because they're just following orders. We didn't write the laws. We just enforce them. Mr. Dickon was at first handcuffed and questioned by police before his version of the events was confirmed by CCTV footage. Many more people, this is the police chief, many more people would have died last night if not for a reasonable armed citizen that took action very quickly within the first two minutes of the shooting. Some say he took down the active shooter within 15 to 20 seconds at 40 yards with a handgun. I will say his actions were nothing short of heroic. That's what we should have been hearing from police chief Joe Logan, but we didn't. Why? Because we, you've got situation lockdown in police state in Honolulu. It is according to every town USA, which is absolutely anti second amendment. It is number six in the country for gun law strength down from number three last year. They love this. The higher you are, like the lower you are, the better they think it is because they want you to be disarmed. They want you to be at the mercy of law enforcement agents who say, hey, you got a situation unfolding before you like that? Is your life ebbing away as seconds pass and the gunman is making his way toward you in the backyard or in your classroom or in Greenwood Mall? Don't worry. Pull out your cell phone. Call the police. We've got the resources it takes to handle that kind of situation. I don't care if you have an F-16 fighter jet. If you don't get there till after I die, the only resource that's gonna benefit my family is a body bag to take my carcass away.
What do you think about this? There's a lot of people who are expressing their grave disdain over what the police chief said. And they're like, you better make your state a stand your ground state. You better get rid of those restrictive gun laws that cost lives like crazy. Leave your thoughts about this for the world and the global thought police in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification icon, give it a thumbs up, share it with everybody you know. Don't forget to subscribe to my email list through my website, highimpactflix.com. If you want to support the channel further, the links are in the description. Grab a shirt, become a channel member, but more importantly, understand that in times of universal deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. I will see you in the next video.